couple things happened since the last episode. So I played a couple more sit and goes and actually lost the $10 deposit I initially made. Oh no. Please ace. Ace. Shit. Oh man. So then I deposited another $10 and actually won a $5 sit and go tournament. Unfortunately, I didn't have any footage of that. And then I played another $5 sit and go tournament, actually lost that $5, saw us down back to around $15. And then I played in a cash game and won some extra money. And now my current balance is around $18. Pair of sevens. Three of a kind. Right, here we go. Uh, let's see if we get this guy out. He's bluffing. He's got to be. All right, come on. Yes. Just like that. Easy money, but I'm currently $20 in on the series and if you guys are enjoying the series and would like to see these uploads in a more frequent basis, let me know in the comment section below what type of footage you guys want to see. Do you want to see the games that I lose? Do you want to see only the games that I win? Do you just enjoy the highlight clips? Let me know what you guys think because this is just a developing series as I try to get better at poker online. And if you guys want to support the series, I'm currently trying to get this YouTube channel monetized. And whenever I do, I'm going to be using most of the revenue that I generate off of this YouTube channel to the poker series, which will enable me to play some higher stakes poker. And if you want to support the series right now, feel free to check out some of my other videos because all I need to monetize this channel at this point is some more watch time. So I might be adding some extra footage at the end of certain videos just to be able to extend the watch time a little bit. Or if you want to support the series currently, I'll have an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. If you click on that Amazon affiliate link and purchase anything on Amazon, I'll get a small commission at no cost to you. Let's play poker. All right, so there actually isn't really any live commentary from the footage here. When I was playing these games, I was mostly just listening to the news, just trying to get the most recent updates on what's going on with the virus that's currently happening. And I've learned a couple of things. So I was playing mostly smaller stakes. The table I'm at in the current footage is the maximum. I think you could bring to the table is around $2 and each hand is about one to two cents. And I've learned that if you just kind of space out your bets, People typically think, oh, this guy, there's a chance that he might be bluffing. So I'm just going to keep on going and see what happens. So I played a little bit light in the beginning and I try to go for the flush. It doesn't happen. So I just kind of check and I just wait to see what these other people do until I either get the ace or the flush at this point. So I'm just still kind of waiting. I'm just going to go all in at this point just to kind of bluff him out, see what happens. And I'm willing to take the risk because still a high chance that I could get the flush or just the pair of aces and here I am a little bit worried but then the ace popped up and I'm like yes finally here we go and let's go on to the next clip here and it's still the same table and again just trying to do the light call here and if my theory is if anyone actually bets since I'm willing to actually see what's happening with the flop I'm just going to keep going regardless of what anyone is betting and I didn't get anything off of the flop, but I still want to stay in and see what I can do with this particular hand. So I check and still waiting for what these other two people are going to do. They both have a lot more money than me. So I know that if I actually get something, there's a chance that I could pull them in and actually get a decent amount of money from them. So just betting small, seeing what happens and seeing if the guy up top will actually push or, you know, raise. He doesn't really raise. So I decide to just 
do the small pot again and see what happens. And he, there it goes. There is that raise I was looking for. And since he already raised, I know I could pretty much just go all in and he'll just push. So he did not have anything. So <laughs> I had no idea why that guy decided to do that. So whenever I have a decent chance of getting a high flush, I typically at least chase the flop just to see what happens. And regardless of what people bet with these smaller stakes, I'm at a different table now where I think the maximum is $10 and each hand is about two to five cents depending on if you're to the left of the dealer chip. I'm still really just learning the concept of the game and seeing how when I bet what other people do, how they react. And I noticed that when I'm in like the much smaller stakes, people are more afraid and they don't seem to bluff as much. So when I'm able to bluff in a new table in the beginning, I'm able to get that early position and get a lot of money for that table. And then I usually just hop tables pretty quickly just before people start realizing what I'm actually trying to do to them. And here able to win $7 for that table. And then I'm just transporting tables at this point, bringing out the minimum dollar amount. I think this table, the minimum dollar is about $4 you could bring in. I forget what the maximum is. It could be around like 10 to $15, I think. So I had a pretty good ace queen here and anything with an ace, I typically push at this point, still trying to figure out my strategy for this. And usually with king 10 and above, I push queen 10 and above, Jack, 10 and above, I typically push depending on what their suit is. But this one I just had a really good feeling about, so I decided to go for it. And again, most people at this table have more money than me, so I knew that if I would chase, they would most likely just follow suit. And able to get a nice $5 bounce at this table and immediately get a pair of jacks. So here I just know, whenever I get usually 10 pair or above, I just go all in for it, hoping that I get either the third one, get trips, or maybe eventually the full house. I know in some cases, if people don't raise before you see the flop, I typically just go in for it if I have a pair because I never know when I'm gonna get the trip and potentially the full house. So here, I have a very good feeling because all of the cards off of the flop were pretty low and I was pretty confident that he didn't have a pair, so I was just kind of trying to bait him here. I didn't want to go all in at this point because I knew he would potentially fold. And when I knew I had the double pairs, he most likely didn't have a pair of eights I wasn't feeling. So decided to go all in just to see what happens and he dipped out. So very lucky play there. And we're going to go into, I think this is our last clip or second to last clip. So I know I said earlier that I usually only push when there is a pair of tens or above, but I decided to just see what happens with this one. Uh, because I was already winning at this table and just wanted to try something new just experiment a little still learning the game and here I land the full house so here I'm trying to figure out all right how do I want to play this to earn the maximum amount of money because at this point I was pretty certain that I've already won this hand and I just wanted to bait him as much as I could I knew I couldn't go too high or both of them would just fold so I decided to just throw out a dollar because that guy had a balance of five and that other guy had a balance of eight dollars and then at this point, I'm just trying to figure out, all right, it, what is the maximum way I could get this last guy? He obviously has something or thinks I don't have anything. So how could I play this for him to push the full amount? And then he just he just goes, tries to get me all in just to dry bluff me out. And he had the flush, but didn't know I had the full house and was lucky enough to win that money. So at this point, I had around $25 in my balance. I withdrew $15. So I'm currently only negative five into the series. And I currently have a balance of $10 in my PokerStars account. So we're going to see what we can do with that in future episodes. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys later.